Like when I woke up this morning, I was feeling pretty dangerous. I'm about the past, I'm about the future. What's up, everybody? We are back at Draft Bass. Draft Bass. And I got our friends, friends of the podcast, Joe Yanucci, who's at Say Mr. Beefy. Say hi, Mr. Beefy. Wasabi. Wasabi. And I also got our friend, Mr. Ryan Lodge, infamous host of the Rhino Comedy Club over How's in it? Suffern, New York. Suffern. Suffering. Got, gotta love it. Yeah, that, that's a place that needs laughter. A place that's suffering. That joke's been made so many times. <laughs> and it's, and it's back still back. amazing. Yeah. So we are here. We are talking fantasy football. Yes. And dude, it is uh, it's that time of year where ADP comes into play. <laughs> the aver- uh, average draft position of most of these players. I'm also showing up my big board of guys that I'm... These are kind of getting close to my finalized ranks. And I'll, I'll find a way of releasing them. Maybe I'll just release them on Instagram. Uh, maybe a PDF or something, but uh, I have these kind of. I did also throw out the idea. We probably should start a blog. A blog, so, yes. Yeah, and I that, wouldn't mind doing that. Yeah, I would really like that. So possibility, we'll see what happens. There is a possibility there. Um, so these guys have my my big board in front of them. They're going to make some comments on uh, some of the players of where I put them on my big board, and uh, also we're going to go over ADP and how uh, utilizing ADP kind of can be important and some of the the guys going over under on like over on under on am i even on them as far as the the market goes uh and right off the bat like you guys actually use adp when you guys draft i think yes yeah like everybody does right this is a very common thing um so and these are usually published numbers that the websites give out espn does it uh there's some fancy football calculators that do it and they give out the information and what it does is it tells you where guys are going in a lot of a mock drafts, but also actual drafts as well. Yeah. And it, it's a good thing to know because sometimes you might know that you're really high on the market. And if you have a player that you are, say you have a guy who's 17th on your board and he's going 34th and you're picking back to back picks and you feel all right, or maybe you're picking close to each other, you might be able to in your draft sneak one by and get a guy who maybe is a little bit closer in ADP to your ranking and get and double up on some actual value. Walter, when should people start checking ADP? We're getting there. I think this is when this is probably about the time where you want to keep an eye on the market because there's a lot of times where people start checking ADP way too early. And I've had people on the, on the podcast who are like, Oh, this is where this guy's going. But a lot of times, a lot of times like people check ADP and they're checking it in July, but Nobody, you know, people haven't caught up to speed on things. Um, a lot of the news hasn't broken yet. People haven't got, you know, yeah. you're not finding out how teams are really utilizing players. July's too yeah. early. July's yeah. a little early, even before the first preseason game's a little early. And now we're in the part where you want to at least start monitoring it. Plus, this is when yeah. people are finally starting to actually get into fantasy, right? Like, this is where the average fan starts looking into it and going, hey, Yo, uh, let's start let's start doing our prep because we got our draft in a week or two, and we got to yeah. start looking at guys who we're gonna get, and start doing our mock drafts. So this is about the time where everybody you're gonna start trying to do mock drafts, and you're gonna keep getting blocked out of lobbies left and right because mm-hmm. this is where everybody starts to do it, and this is where ADP becomes like a valuable thing to look at because say you're really high on I'm gonna say Darius Geis because it's a good one to just randomly pick out there, and we talked about him previously on the last podcast. But everybody else is really low on them. You can maybe take a note and see, like, hey, maybe you're willing to take him in the fifth round, and he's going in the ninth <clears> round. <throat> you could take him in the sixth and get a guy in the fifth that you actually are valuing. Um, and, and there's also the expert consensus rankings, which a lot of websites use, which actually tends to affect ADP. So if you ever drafted on ESPN, you notice that there's like, there's like the the say you go on auto draft all of a sudden there's players that you will automatically pick that it's ESPN picked them up for yeah. you. Yeah. And I, I feel like those, I don't like it sometimes because I don't like that. It's it's almost kind of, it's on its own affecting the market in those leagues. Yeah. So say ESPN has Baker Mayfield at 60, and a lot of people in the drafts are going, oh, wait, I see Baker Mayfield here. I'm going to take him at 60. So it, it artificially inflates a lot of them. I don't know if there's a better way of doing it. I think sometimes maybe last year's ranks of how everybody finished last year, but you take guys out for injury and things like that. Yeah. I think there's a few different ways of doing it. But then you'd have guys who maybe got injured last year who maybe should be up higher. Like, 
Well, AJ Green was one that I would probably say, but AJ Green's injured now. So, yeah. So, uh, I, I've given these guys right off the bat. Is there any guys on my big board right now that you guys disagree with where I have them? Um, top ten. I mean, top ten. You got Zeke. Two is Saquon Barkley, then Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey, Melvin Gordon, Le'Veon Bell, seven is David Johnson, eight, DeAndre Hopkins, nine, Joe Mixon, ten, Nick Chubb. Yes. And keep in mind, the Zeke and Melvin Gordon rankings are like temporary rankings. It's true. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Because if you're drafting right now, you kind of have to, and I'll, I'll, I'll make ranks for them if they don't end, like if we're, if you have to draft this week, honestly... If you are really at a point where you don't know, you're better off taking guys much lower on the list. Yeah. So definitely hold out on those guys. But right now, like if you were gonna we're pretending that they're playing tomorrow, this is where I have them ranked. But Melvin Gordon can report tomorrow because he only has to now. Granted, Melvin Gordon might only play eight games this season. Yeah. Because he only yeah. has to play eight games to make it to free agency. Yeah, that's true. Whereas Zeke is already past that August sixth deadline. Which is, I think makes it more likely that he's not going to show up because yeah. he's got two more years left on his contract. So, so he can sit out if he really wants to. Because it's not going to change anything. Yeah, no, We're not. going off point. of Walter's uh, custom rankings right now. Yeah. The biggest thing that I've seen so far is everybody has Saquon at one. But Walter has Zeke at number one. Yes. Why do you have Zeke over Saquon? Well, one is I think he's part of a better offense. I think that it's and even if you don't believe in Dak Prescott, I, and again, that, definitely not a forty million dollar a year fucking. Well, yeah, that's a whole other question mark definitely right there. Definitely not. But he's playing this year, as far as we know. We know Dak Prescott's playing this year. Yeah. If yeah. Zeke is playing Week One, and I in this situation, I'm believing he is. You have a good offensive line. Zeke can catch out of the backfield. He's not Saquon Barkley in the route running aspect of it, but. I think he's part of a more efficient offense. I believe more in Dak Prescott than I believe in Eli Manning, and I don't know what exists with Daniel Jones. So you have Amari Cooper there. You have a good offensive line that's getting Daniel Travis. Daniel Jones really did play a great game this, this the first week of the preseason. The first, he, he played a lot yeah, better than I, Eli Manning ever looked in practice. Apparently he's done pretty well. And that's a good thing, I, but I'm not going to make an assessment off of week one of the preseason. True. And I, I, I commented on that. In a preseason recap at the end of the episode with Luke Rothschild. And what I said was, he went 5 for 5. He showed good things. A couple years ago, there was a Deshaun Kaiser in the league. And he's still in the league. He's playing on Green Bay Packers. But everybody kind of went bananas because he did really well for the preseason. And then the team went 0-16 with him as their quarterback. So teams are playing very vanilla defenses. Uh, even the offense that they were running was very vanilla, and it was simple reads. But he, yeah, you're right. It sh- he it showed that he can throw the ball. It showed that he can he he could accurately place it at least with the the couple of reads that he had. It showed that he knew how to you know do play action and get his head around quick enough. And so there's aspects of it that you like. Yeah. yeah. And it's showing that he's making progress. So I think there is a value to it, but I don't know how how much you take into account with it, considering teams aren't playing up these massive defenses. Yeah. So I concur. And we just don't, again, you just don't know. He's still a question mark no matter what. Yeah. Hopefully he is, for the Giants' sake, a good quarterback. Yeah. Hopefully they get to a point where if they start him, they can make some stars out of their out of their receivers. Yeah. So do you think there's anybody that should be in the top 10? Um, that is not. Juju Smith-Schuster. Wow. As much as I really am not a fan of... Steelers or their quarterback. Uh, I think Juju's really going to be pulling his weight. This really? Season. Yeah. Juju is currently ranked at 28. 28, I think. Overall. Should, no, overall. Yeah. 28 overall. Yeah. Yes. Top 10, <laughs> he, he should be in the top 15. Top 15. Yeah. Well, Juju Smith Schuster was the eighth uh, wide receiver last year overall in PPR. Mm-hmm. And that was, but a lot of his production came with Antonio Brown on the field. Yes. So that's not you're not talking about eighth overall in production. You're talking about eighth overall as receiver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So even then, he should, that that wouldn't equal top ten as far as a player. Like I said, Unless you're saying you think he's going to go ahead and take a step 15, forward. Not not top ten, but top fifteen, absolutely. 
And then I would move Todd Gurley down because uh, on this paper he's 11th. ranked 11th. I would move him down, mm-hmm. and I would move Juju up. So you would move Juju up to 11? Yeah. I, w- I would put Todd Gurley at 15, maybe 16. Gotcha. Okay. So I, I get the worries with Todd Gurley, and the injury risk really yeah. is there. Absolutely. And that's the thing that I think when you make a risk assessment of players – I I really did fight with where to put Todd Gurley. I had Todd Gurley initially earlier in the ranks. And I just, when I look at the the replaceability of running back and a really good running back, taking, you know, you're, if you're, your team is made off of your number one running back. Yeah. If you don't have a good running back in your team, you know, you have a bunch of RB2s or guys that are playing at like running back 14 or running back 25, like it's worth the risk because Todd Gurley can end up making your league. It can end up ma- he can make your and if you're drafting enough depth, like the replaceability of that position is much different than say wide receiver. Yeah, that's where true. the eighth wide receiver out doesn't outplay the eighteenth wide receiver by that much compared to the if Todd Gurley plays even a fraction of what he did last year, right? He's playing maybe fifteen to twenty percent less in snaps. Yeah. And he was unhealthy in the postseason. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But now you're talking about a full off season. You're talking about... And actually, my worries with Todd Gurley don't just come from the the injury risk. There are some changes on the offensive line. Yeah. The interior of the offensive line's changed up a bit. Uh, that does affect it a little <clears throat> bit, but he's still got Andrew Whitworth. You hope that the wheels don't fall off on that offense this year. But he still catches patch, passes out of the backfield. Even if they're curtailing some of his snaps, he's a good running back. And he's on a team that Sean McVay knows how to use him. Yeah. And when he's been on the field, he's been good. It so, depends how bad is. I mean, they say that arthritic knee. If it's a little, if it's like beginning stages, it's yeah, like, he could probably. I mean, they'll probably utilize him. But if it's pretty far along, he probably doesn't have much. Well, time we saw left. this with Sony Michelle last year. We've seen it with other. It's weird that Georgia running backs seem to have knee problems a lot. Conspiracy, right? It's just they they don't <laughs> like knees in Georgia. I think so. Uh, he's actually going to have a really good season this season. Sony Michelle? Yeah. Well, very good season. He's ranked 31 on this. But that's actually higher than the market. Because yeah. we were talking about ADP here. Yeah. And uh, I think Julian Edelman is a little too low. Where um, I have him. Seems yeah, like you're talking a lot about Patriots players. He is a very clutch player. <laughs> I wonder player. why we're talking about <laughs> Patriots players. He is a very clutch player when it comes down to it. So we were talking um, since you brought up Sony Michelle, and we're talking about running backs and receivers right now. Sony Michelle right now on my list is the thirty-one, and in ADP he's going at fifty-eight. Yeah, I know. So wow, I understand why people are a little bit more worried with Sony Michelle. I kind of i I think when you're when you, with fantasy football, the 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 clear trick with it is. You want to take risks, but you want to take calculated risks. It's like when you're investing in a stock market, which stocks are the most volatile, which are safe, which are blue chip, which are the ones that are going to get you a lot of wins. I think that if Todd, like, again, this is what comes down to Todd Gurley and Sony Michelle. I think running backs are the big risk players, and that's yeah. those are the ones you want to take the really big bullets on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the receivers are the ones you want to be safe on, but you want to take a good amount of them because you want them to flatten it all out. Yeah. But if you hit on running back... You, if you have two RB ones and you have and you're getting a replacement level or better out of the other positions, you're gonna do well. Yeah. So, question for you guys: first two rounds of the draft, what are you going? You going running back, running back? You going running back receiver? Well, it really depends on where you are too, where you're drafting. Yeah, that's true. But if you're drafting In the league and whatnot, and that's why I have ranks because I could kind of see where. All right. If I'm drafting at, say, that's why, like, in my top 10, I only have one receiver, and that's DeAndre Hopkins. True. Because he's the only one that I can kind of see replacing some of that value, being a wide receiver one or two in fantasy and outproducing the, the next batch of receivers by enough where it's worth it. Yeah. Uh, do I think, uh, and I have Odell here with asterisks next to him, because these ranks are, they're fluid, and I currently he I personally would probably draft Odell or I'd be interested in drafting Odell as my second wide receiver off the board. 
But I also know that when you're advising other people of doing things and risk assessments, mm. my risk assessment is Odell's probably way riskier to take than Devontae Adams, Michael Thomas, and Julio Jones. Yeah. Yeah. All those guys have been relatively healthy the last few years, Consistent. haven't had as many injury issues, and also aren't changing teams. Yeah, that's true. And as much as I love Baker, as much as I love the Browns, and as much as I think Odell's going to do great. And I Are think you a Browns fan? I, I've heard. Yeah. I've heard from somewhere I was a Browns fan. I I still can understand people having that risk assessment. And I even said, uh, you know, this is my my admission to that is if I'm telling somebody else to do something, I'm a little bit more risk adverse Yeah. as far as my receivers go. So I could turn around to somebody and say, you know what? Probably not best to take Odell. Probably best to take Devontae Adams, who's going to have Aaron Rodgers back. Who's gonna, yeah. And Aaron Rodgers is going to preferably be healthy. And Devontae Adams gets a lot of red zone targets. Yeah, that's true. What about you, Joe? What, what would you do? If, like, what's your game plan? You go running back, running back, receiver, running back, receiver, receiver. Ru- running back, receiver? Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I think you have to be fluid and also know yeah. where the board is falling. Yeah. Um, if you are... If you're at the end of the first round and you're at 12, right, and everybody went running back and you could take DeAndre Hopkins and Odell Beckham. And those oh, I would your... definitely take DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I... Who would you take for – so if you're at the end of the first round, you take you take DeAndre Hopkins. I would start out, yeah, DeAndre what, Hopkins. What would you take for your second pick? Um, would you go for a lower-tier running back or would you keep – would you keep it going? And would you say, screw everybody, I'm going to take Devontae Adams, or I'm going to roll the dice on Odell or Julio? So are we or... predicting it? So I would go with Julio. Yeah? Yeah. So Julio Jones. Absolutely. Receiver, receiver. I yep. like it. Screw everybody, right? You know? Yeah. You might as well get the best of the best. <laughs> because I mean, you do have some, you know. Well, if you're picking at 12, right, and say going off of ADP from ESPN, that would be Saquon, Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, Zeke Elliott, Le'Veon Bell, David Johnson, Todd Gurley, even Melvin Gordon, James Conner, Joe Mixon, and Dalvin Cook all going. Yeah. If you're going with the top 11 guys that have been gone. So the next guys down are you know, Nick Chubb. I'd be willing to take Nick Chubb yeah. at the top of the second. But in my ranks, Nick Chubb's going higher. So it depends on who's there. I, I'm not taking Leonard Fournette at the top of the second. Mm. Yeah, I, actually, I can understand somebody doing it, but because it was, but I, but I probably wouldn't do it. True. Nick Chubb, considering that Walter is a diehard Browns fan, I feel as if it's uh, a great time to ask him this. With Nick Chubb being the running back number one, they also have Kareem Hunt as their number two. I'm way less worried about that than everybody else is. Really? Yes. And part of it is because a, I saw them. This is, everybody was worried about like. I don't know why Nick Chubb's stock went up a little bit when Duke Johnson got traded because Duke Johnson was on the team yeah. last year, didn't do anything. Yeah. And Freddie Kitchens was the offensive coordinator last year. And again, Duke Johnson didn't do anything when he was the offensive coordinator. Yeah. Now, they might have been planning to do something with him or not. They traded him. It's not that big of a deal anymore. I I look at it like this. If my biggest worry with Nick Chubb is the O-line and his knee, not Kareem Hunt. Because if, if your guy's doing good for the first nine or ten weeks and he's playing like a top-level running back, do you think they're benching him for Kareem Hunt? Yeah. yeah. Like, they're not... Who? If you have a good running back, he's been playing every down, he's been good. What coach in his right mind is going, you know, we've been playing ten games with uh, Nick Chubb, who's been helping us win games. But we got this guy who just came off of... Uh, off of the reserve list yeah we're gonna all of a sudden switch him to number one if it ain't broke don't fix it exactly so if you, it depends on what's your assessment of nick chubb if your assessment of nick chubb is he's an average running back and you and you're going okay like i think nick chubb is really good i think he's better than kareem hunt as a running back yeah so my belief in nick chubb is why i sit there and say i could see him ranked there because you know what i are they really gonna after 10 weeks of having him maybe they'll cut down on the carries but he's still gonna get playing time but too. Get the bulk of it the one other thing, mm-hmm. I think Carson's, Carson Wentz is ranked way too high. Oh, oh, you Lord. you don't like Carson. Yeah. I, uh, I think. It's by the way, Carson Wentz is ranked eighty fourth on my big board. We're not even talking high. about. Can, can we high. clarify that Carson Wentz being ranked eighty fourth on my big board? Says, that doesn't mean he's number one quarterback either. It, yeah, I know. He's I also. Know. I know. Also going by ADP. Right, um, Carson Wentz is the ninth quarterback, coming I, off at ninety-five. So I'm ten spots higher than the average market right now in, on ESPN. You, you, you probably should have left him at ninety-four. 
I think he's an RG three situation. I do not believe. I that. absolutely. And I two we're seasons talking about two down, years ago, two, two injuries out. I don't think he's ever going to be able to stay Andrew healthy Luck, for though. a full season. People would be saying that about Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck, yeah, I understand that. But. And I think Carson Wentz has way more weapons. He I does think have Carson way more Wentz, weapons, yes, but I honestly do not think wise? he could stay healthy at all. Well, what's his? What's the current health worry? Um, who, who do you think is a bigger health worry? The guy who's currently in practice? Made, yeah, I still think his knee is made of jello. And, They're all, um, they all got jello knees. They've all been playing football for the and last 10 years. Breaking his back, getting out of bed. I think that was the story, right? <laughs> it was, he broke his back, getting out of bed. Is it? Is that? Does he have bunk beds? He just fell out. Like <laughs> he rolled off the top bunk. He broke his back getting out of bed. I think was he was, was he was jumping the, on I the bed? He, I, he, I, pu- he broke his back in an off way, and I was just, it shocked the hell out of me how this. And I I've not heard that story. Back, I, I'm so gonna was, I'm gonna look into that one. <laughs> but he had a minor fracture in his back, which put him out for the rest of the season yeah. last season. And honestly, I just, the guy's just he's way too fragile. Way too fragile what? To, be, to be having. But compared to who? You got Cam Newton who's going ahead of him in drafts, who, again, another guy who's been massively injured the last few years and has not played to his MVP season yeah, in like three years. Cam uh, Newton's also not on my radar at all. So would you put, I'm just looking at it, you said you'd put him at 94 right yeah, after uh, Russell he's Wilson? Way, he's, yeah, Do you th- would you pick Carson Wentz over Matt Ryan? <laughs> or Cam name. Newton or Philip Rivers? At, um me personally i look at um their uh how long they've been playing in the league yeah well who are you um, picking over him too yeah that's the thing i don't know um, like at, at 94 I like you're at that part baker of the draft mayfield over him and i have baker mayfield carson wentz and deshaun, deshaun. watson in a cluster probably not getting the other two D- uh, baker mayfield is going at the end of the fifth round at pick oh 50. yeah tom brady even on this list it's tom brady even on the list well, he was QB 14 last year, so he's probably towards the... Um, he would be in that, that Philip Rivers, Kirk Cousins spectrum. Damn, I don't... no respect. Wait, is he on here? Yeah, he's not even on the list. He's not, he's not on this <laughs> list. I think he's yeah. not on this list. <laughs> I think really print out. We've gotten to 135. Yeah. He's, he's okay, so let's list. look at it like this. I have another set of... Uh, this is the second rendition of the big board. Um... <laughs> Greg Olson's ghost so is one sixteen in front of Tom Brady. Damn, that's that's ice cold. That is ice I, cold, man. Because I I look at it as what's the ceiling on Carson Wentz, right? Carson Wentz was on an MVP ride two years ago, right? He was doing good. True. Yeah. He's gonna he have Alshon Jeffrey tore healthy. His leg apart. Well, he's now a more than a year removed from the ACL. I was I was not for drafting Carson Wentz last year early. I was not for I taking Deshaun Watson back. early. Both those guys were coming off of ACLs, and Carson Wentz's ACL was a lot more complicated, too. Yeah. He had an LCL and an ACL. Yeah, gotta love those. I think with Tom Brady, I think your argument would be he's got he's way more consistent, but I don't think he has a as high of a ceiling as Carson. Just because Brady can't rush. Yeah. Like Carson Brady can't rush, but I Car- Carson yeah. Carson can run. But with that comes the risk of Injury. tearing your ACL and MCL. Was yeah. it MCL or LCL? LCL. LCL at the same time. Yeah. So I think it's like high risk, high reward. If you're looking for, if you want to wait, be consistent, play it safe with something more proven. Obviously, Tom Brady can prove himself. Uh, and go I, him. If you want to go bigger, go home. Well, that's the thing. And if you're taking quarterback, right, and you're taking quarterback in the ninth, tenth round, my my feelings on it are take the guy who's going to go ahead and has the the ceiling hit. Yeah, right? especially because well, if yeah. if you're in a league where you're only drafting one quarterback, I don't mind drafting Carson Wentz over somebody like Philip Rivers or Matt Ryan. Um, yeah, even Matt Ryan or even Kirk Cousins because I'll, somebody's going to be on the waiver wire too. Fifty. Well, that's what. That's oh, where I, I don't agree with that. But he's still my second quarterback. Jared Goff. That's just because of how I value quarterbacks. True. And now, yeah, and that's the other thing. It all depends on what type of league you're in. If yes. you're doing a .5 PPR, all the receivers and running backs are going to go up a little bit. On One of full point for, uh, rece- per reception, you know, the value is going to drive receivers and running backs up so much. And quarterbacks are going to be, you know, bottom of the barrel. 
Yeah. Well, especially if you're playing one QB. Now, if you're playing and that too, yeah. If you're playing two QB leagues, then it it changes the the value of it. If yeah. You're playing some. If you're playing in a team that has a uh, playing in a league that has a super flex, these are not super flex ranks. These are you're playing one quarterback, and there's so many quarterbacks that once you get out of the the range of guys who could be the number one QB, then it's and not to say that Tom Brady absolutely can't, but when you look at everything around him, no Gronk. Yeah, no Gronk, but he still has Edelman. He still has White. He still has Inkill Harry, who's actually I should be a very good addition. I was um, not huge on him coming out of the draft. Um, and also, like you have to be careful with the noise that you hear coming out of camps. So, I and that. the noise had, coming out of camp with him problem. has not been great either, though. Um, I, th- I think I think the payoff me. with Nikhil Harry is not going to be for another year or two. You're always, you guys are always freaking scare. And I'm an Eagles fan. Joe's a Patriots fan, and I hate saying it, but you guys always scare the shit out of me. Brady could have like high ankle sprain in both of his feet, plantar fasciitis, torn AC- bilateral torn ACLs, and I am still, He's still playing with the, saying hell Mary for the games, praying that. You know. All right. Outside of Tom Brady, are there any major questions with the ranks that you are? I mean, I like Stefan Diggs and Amari Cooper, Brandon Cooks. All of them seem to be in line. Adam Thielen. Um, in that 20s range of. Zach Ertz uh, maybe could be moved up a little bit. Um, oh, actually, that's the one stat I heard recently is uh, the big three. They, yeah, the big, people, t- the, three big the big three tight ends. Uh, uh, Ertz, Kittle, and... Uh, who, am I, who else am I missing? Ertz, Kittle, and Kelsey. Kelsey. Um, they did so well last year mm-hmm. that, I mean, Kelsey broke the receiving record for uh, tight, tight end. ends. And then Kittle broke it, what, the week, the next week? Two weeks later? Something crazy like that. Um, the biggest thing was, like, they crushed it last year. Yeah. They're due for some regression. I, there's no, I mean, I don't I'm, bet on, I, 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 so I do think that there is probably some regression going in yeah. that. I don't always kind of plan for regression, but what, what I kind of looked at it with, so we're, uh, I have Kelsey at 24, right? Where yeah. like, end of the, end of the second round, beginning of the third spot, like I could see people start taking him there because yeah. the argument of, Hey, if I'm going to take Kelsey, you, where is Kelsey falling ranks with the other with receivers and running backs? And also, True. which guys are he you does passing have a very up good on? Quarterback too. He does very great quarterback. Yeah. And there's the guy can throw no looks out of like you know, I know. side, side arm, arm and stuff. And yeah, just, yeah. yeah. Mahomes is. But what are you I, missing out on by grabbing that tight end? So again, the guys who are going, the guys who I have ahead of Kelsey are Thielen, T.Y. Hilton, Keenan Allen, all guys who can be wide receiver ones. Right. Yeah. I, and in fact, I, yeah. I picked Thielen for a specific reason, which was Thielen was the last receiver last year to have more points than Kelsey. So anybody who I had above Thielen, yeah, in my ranks, I picked them to kind of. All right, they. I believe that they have that potential to be wide receiver one, two, three next True. year. So another hypothetical. So you guys go for, through the first two rounds, mm-hmm. you get your running back, receiver, whatever you guys want to do. Your third round. Would you rather go with a? second slash third tier receiver or would you go and drop an earlier pick on one of the big three tight ends kelsey Ertz, or kittle because you're getting you're getting the production of a high level receiver but the drop off from the let's say the the bot the top three compared to like the top the number four number five number six tight end it is a it, lot. It's huge. It you is. Know? So would you would you go would you draft a tight end, one of the top three tight ends earlier than their ADP? Would you reach a little bit? Well, my big worry with Kittle is he's only done it once. True. Ertz just doesn't seem to perform as well as the other ones. He's Travis like, Kelsey's the safer pick. Yeah. Yeah. If Kelsey's Travis probably, Kelsey's yeah. there, and that's why Travis Kelsey I have at the end of second, early third. Yeah. And I, I don't worry as much if I'm taking him. Because I think he will reproduce he has, a, yeah. a good portion of he what he's doing. He has a very solid quarterback, and um, he's got a floor. Yeah. It, provided he's not injured. Yeah. And again, there That's there true. have been years of that going on too. Uh, Kittle, I have Kittle currently at pick thirty four, and Zachary's thirty three. 
And I can understand people swapping the two of them because Ertz, you know, there's some questions if he's going to have as many targets this year. Yeah. There's Dallas Goddard. There's a lot more receiving weapons. I could see people having him lower. I Again, see I have Mark Ingram lower. And that's why I have them more close to the end of the third, beginning of the fourth round. Yeah. Because you don't know if, if Kittle's going to do it again. You don't know. Again, that, that was without Jimmy Garoppolo there. You don't know how. Oh, yeah, that's true. You, he had who? Where? No. Mullins. Mullins, yeah. And uh, C.J. Bethard. Wow. So guys who are no names doing it for him, but they're probably just checking it down to him. But I, I put him in that category of, okay, like Ray right on the wide receiver two range of guys that are solid but probably not going to be wide receiver ones anytime soon again. Yeah. So Alshon Jeffrey, Tyler Boyd, Jarvis Landry. Uh, but behind, you know, Sony Michelle, Juju Smith-Schuster, Antonio Brown even. So any other questions on the ranks or, or guys that you really are uh, any eye poppers there? I mean, Jared Goff is on the list. It's just, it, it breaks my heart that Tom Brady's nowhere near. <laughs> it breaks my heart. It breaks uh, my heart, Walter. I think um, one of the guys that could probably produce, I mean, it all kind of depends on his quarterback, is Christian Kirk. He did pretty well last year, and he did not have the best quarterback. Now he's got Kyler Murray. My big question with that is they also drafted three receivers. They have Larry Very Fitzgerald true. there. It wasn't Christian Kirk was not somebody who was part of the Cliff Kingsbury draft. Uh, so I can understand why people would maybe say, and, and the reason why I don't have him very high yeah, is I think there's other players there who I feel more comfortable taking, who I think are more likely to take a leap forward. There's, uh, you know, on and even on his own team, you know, you got Hakeem Butler, you got Andy Isabella, you got Larry Fitzgerald, you got Keyshawn Johnson, and it, there's and David Johnson, Ricky Seals Jones, Charles Clay. There's a lot they're of weapons, loaded. and there's no direct idea of where they're gonna go with any of these particular players. Yeah. So I, I don't feel as comfortable. Plus, Cliff Kingsbury's offense could totally be shit, and they can lose out. That's true. Uh, Kyler Murray can get injured the first week, and they lose out. Kyler Murray can end up being a dud, and they lose out. There's a lot more red flags and question marks with that offense. I just don't know how they're using Christian Kirk. I hope he does well. I would like to see him I do, too. I, crush I, it. I actually didn't think his quarterback was bad last year. I think their offensive line was trash. Yeah, that's why David Johnson didn't do well at all. Also, they're, that's why they sucked in fantasy last year. Their offensive coordinator was horrible. His name was Mike McCoy, and there's a reason why he doesn't have a job right now. <laughs> yeah, really. And he's gotten fired twice midseason. So when you have a OC who's been fired twice midseason... That's not a good look. Yeah, so I, I personally am not looking at it with the eyes of, oh, it's definitely a uh, Christian Kirk or Josh Rosen problem. It's I just don't know. There's too many red flags yeah. going on with it. Um, I have a cluster of, like, uh, sophomore guys that I, I'm very high on that are in that, like, 50s to 60s range. And then there's the, the second wave of tight ends in that 60s range as well. So nice. let's go over some ADP. Because we were talking about ADP before, I wanted to give you guys a chance to give you a, give a little bit of critique on the the ranks of how you feel about them. Go over some uh, feelings, and just even some shockers. I'm shocked that Baker Mayfield is the fourth quarterback off the board right now, and going at the end round end of round five. Uh, Matt Ryan's going at the uh, end of round five. Deshaun Watson's going at pick forty, and and Pat Mahomes is going in the first two rounds. Just quarterbacks alone, that's, uh, you know, even if you love Pat Mahomes. And by that's the way, Pat so Mahomes early. and Deshaun Watson are going ahead of Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I, I definitely see, I completely understand that. I just think the first two rounds, and this is terrible considering uh, my fantasy leagues might be listening to this podcast, mm -hmm. and it's going to completely screw me over. But I just think Pat Mahomes and even Deshaun, well, I mean, Deshaun's later ADP, but so early. So early. I think you can wait a little bit, and uh, you should just stack up on running backs, receivers, even you know, yeah, some of the better tight ends. You know, and if Andrew Luck ends up being healthy, which right now we have a lot of question marks with Andrew Luck. Yeah, like Andrew Luck's going at pick sixty six in ESPN. Like, yeah, that's you know, you're talking about now you're in the the sixth round, seventh round range. Th that's not 
the worst place to have to take a quarterback and a lot better. And you're probably getting a lot more flex appeal out of that, like guys who you can flex. You know, if you play in a two running back, two receiver league, or if you're playing three receivers, then you still need another receiver probably by that point. So if yeah. you're taking a, you know, if you're taking one of those other quarterbacks that are going much earlier, you might be running the risk of not getting as good of a running back or receiver or even tight end if you're missing out on one of the big three. Yeah. So Carson Wentz, we said before, was going pick 95. Kyler Murray's going really high. Kyler Murray's going as yeah. QB 11. Now, granted, right now in ESPN, he's, they're saying he's going at pick 107, so it's not bad. It's about round 10. But I was a little shocked to see how quickly people were jumping on the Kyler Murray train. Yeah, that's... And, and picking him ahead of Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson, Ben Roethlisberger. And I think it's the question of the unknown. Yeah. Russell Wilson I, I wouldn't, always I wouldn't gets put him done. above any of those other guys. Yeah, I wouldn't either. And guys who I'm shocked at how low they're going are, you know, I guess this is where the, the end of the draft where people are, like, taking their, you know... They're either their QB two or guys who they're just not super high on, or their base floor quarterbacks. But Philip Rivers is going at is QB eighteen behind Mitch Trubisky. Yeah, that's Kirk Cousins picked is quarterback twenty. You got Matt Ryan, Jared Goff. Um, yeah. Jared Goff's going uh, as quarterback fifteen, which I, I, that's kind of fair. I don't know. Like I'm not. I'm not too crazy about him. I'm not anti him. I think if you are picking, if if you're picking a late round quarterback, Jerry Goff's fine. Uh, Philip Rivers is fine. Kirk Cousins is fine. I'm actually kind of shocked how low people are on Kirk Cousins. Yeah, especially going into last year where he was a top ten quarterback. Yeah, the weapons that they have. Too, and he was like, and he was QB twelve last year. Now, granted, I think it's the week to week consistency that people want to see because he had some. Big blow up weeks. He had a lot of weeks where he was like, "All right, I got ten, fifteen points here, ten, fifty points there." Da, da, yeah, da, 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 da. He wasn't really raking it in. Yeah, like I have Greg Olson's ghost. <laughs> Greg Olson's ghost is on my rankings. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then there's the What's Amari it? I Cooper, which is, oh yeah, <laughs> which is the new uh, app by uh, Apple. I like it. So uh, those are the quarterbacks that I feel like are just going really awkwardly at I different think spots. Just not even making the list. Well, so cool. depressing. On my list, <clears throat> yeah. I think that's good though. If you look at it right now, just because if he falls that late, you're well, going right to be able now, to get him late. Well, Tom Brady you know right I mean? now is going as QB ten. Yeah. In ADP, at least on in ESPN. On this one, so we have ESPN that provides uh, ADP. Uh, I'm looking at a draft board from a website called Fantasy Football Calculator. Uh, so we're kind of basing what, uh, our ADPs, we're basing it off of two different websites. Mm -hmm. Um, if you go online, there's plenty of different spots you could check it. But, uh, Tom Brady is 12th round, but I, th I mean, I mean, yeah, so he's 10th round hell, in ESPN, I would, but that's not much of a difference to be honest when you're at that stage of the draft. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like if you get Pat Holmes in the second round compared to if you can get Brady in the 12th. I would I would rather yeah. I would rather wait. I think basically the 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 thing with quarterback is is that there's like basically three clusters, right? There's like the number one guys who can probably win you your your league, but that are like they're going way too high. Yeah. So that's the Pat Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Aaron Rodgers of the world, Andrew Luck, even Baker Mayfield I feel is going too high. Yeah. Then there's the guys who you think can be number one, but that are like for some reason kind of a little bit baked a little bit back. And really to me that's only Carson Wentz. And then there's the guys who are basically that other cluster of like QB8 to QB15, which all basically get about the same over the course of the season. Everybody from Matt Ryan, who's going a lot higher than I'm shocked. And yes, because Matt Ryan was QB2 last year, but like kind of under the radar was QB2. He was, Q he was, he was QB2 last year. Matt Ryan? Matt Ryan. What? Blows my mind. Dude, I was shocked to hear that too. Blows I was shocked when mind. I found out no about it. I'm still shocked way. about it. There's so many better guys. What? Wow, so, that's crazy. Quarterback's always a weird position when it comes to ADP. Yeah, because people go bananas about Deshaun Watson, and he, you know, Deshaun Watson. If you had Deshaun Watson last year, the first ten weeks he was not great. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, I, and I, I think there's now he's fully recovered from an ACL. They at least tried to draft O line this year, even if they didn't do it very successfully. Um, yeah, they got Duke. I don't think I would take Deshaun Watson where he's going in the fourth round. 
but it depends no. on what your feelings are towards it. Your personal preference. Yeah. Uh, running backs, though, man. Running backs, I feel like it's it's all over the board here, man. Because even though Nick Chubb is RB13, he's going probably about 15 spots later than I would take him. Like, I would take him pretty much end of the first, beginning of the second area. And Nick Chubb's currently QB, uh, running back 13, but he's going at average pick of 30 in ESPN. I think in a lot of other leagues, he's going a lot higher, though. Like, a lot of other... Uh, uh, I'm looking for him on this, and Chubb is actually going a little bit later. Oh, you even have him later than 30? I think so, yeah. Wow. Uh, let's see. Devontae Freeman's going at as RB14, but he's also going at basically into the fourth round. We're talking here. Devontae Freeman? Devontae Freeman is going as RB14, basically a, a high-end RB2. Yeah. Ahead of Carrion Johnson. I, I'm i shocked everybody's so in love with Derrick Henry this year again. Like, I feel like people fall in love with him every year. Yep, I'm not not doing it. It nah. like, People did this last year. Yeah. They did it two years ago. Not but, doing like, it. But, like, this year and last year, he was going as a third. Last year, he was going as a third-round pick. This year, he's going as a fourth-round pick. So, like, what, he lost five spots because of what? Uh, because people like what he did at the end of the year? But he, if you had him on your team last year, he didn't win you anything. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't winning your league. He might have won you your league if somebody dropped him and you picked him up. But he didn't get you to the playoffs last year. So. I think Le'Veon Bell's a little too high. Yeah. What, an ADP? Yeah. He's going as the fifth on, running back. Six here and then fifth on... On here, fantasy football. I was originally much lower on Le'Veon Bell. Oh yeah, and Le'Veon I, Bell should be lower. Uh, I he was doesn't have an offensive line to make. Well, the whole Joe score. Douglas has made some serious moves. Um, he signed. He got Ryan Khalil. Ryan Khalil to come out of retirement. You still have the former center quarterback and a new head coach. Yeah, and get. It's it's Gase. Adam Gase. Adam yeah, Gase. yeah. He never crazy really... eyes Johnson. Yeah, <laughs> loves his smelling yeah. salts. Yeah, smelling salts in fucking preseason. He um, never really utilized. Well, I mean, granted, it's a different running back, but Kenyon Drake, Kenyon Drake, uh, Jhi. Don't get uh, me wrong; they're going to use Le'Veon Bell, but he's not going to be as productive as he was. Yeah, he could probably be way more productive in a different system. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think that's that... the problem with the Jets. They pick these guys up, and then they don't know how to utilize them to their best ability. It happens year in and year out, coach without coach through coach. And it always happens. Gay seems yeah. to be the kind of head coach that will adapt, though. So if he if he knows his team is going to need X Y Z, he will do he will run that scheme. Yeah, that's why I think they went for Khalil. That's why I think, I think that's what he's going to aim for. But just it's poor execution. It's, well, it was it's poor execution played, based off the old GM. It's and there's a new GM in town, years. and he's made he's made serious efforts with Alex Lewis uh, trading uh, with Baltimore to get again another offensive lineman. Who has been kind of injured over the years, but has been a solid offensive lineman. Yeah. Uh, again, have you? A month ago, I was a different. I felt differently about Le'Veon Bell. I felt a lot more worried. I feel like the, the Ryan Khalil signing and trading for Alex Lewis, seeing that the GM is making real efforts to shore up the offensive line, make moves. Yeah, I, I feel a lot more comfortable knowing that going in. True. And Khalil fits the kind of scheme that benefits Le'Veon Bell. So does Kalechi Assembly, a guy who they traded for in the off season. Granted, that wasn't a Joe Douglas trade. That was a uh, uh, McCagnon trade. So I feel a little bit better about Le'Veon Bell right now than I did, say, a month ago. True. And that's why I have him where I have him. And that, I think that's why he's going as a top five running back. He's going in the top seven picks in a lot of drafts, it looks like. He's going to disappoint a lot of guys this year. Well, it, it, would you rather have Le'Veon Bell or David Johnson? Uh, I know. That's that's the thing. That, or would you Ooh. rather? Who do you want him behind? Me personally, just because I'm so anti Jets, I wouldn't even pick anybody on the team. Well, um, but Matt, but Matt Forte did okay his first year on the Jets. It's like true. he did solid. Yeah. yeah. Well, is year, yeah. is there any running backs where uh, you recognize their ADP, mm -hmm. but you are reaching the to get them because you like them that much more. Well, I think Nick Chubb, looking at his ADP, and I think I keep bringing him up, it, 
he's going in as like 30 and I again I have him as a top 12 pick sounds so like I'm, you have a chub for chub definitely yeah well they don't have hey. Johnson anymore so it's just yeah. getting it's just wow. not getting chub <laughs> um, well played I I just think he's a good player I I, I the other one who I like is I like Dalvin Cook yeah. I think Dalvin Cook comes with a lot more injury risk. He's coming off a torn ACL. Yeah. What about you, Joe? You got anybody that you like that you're going to say? Now, if you're talking about later in the draft, I like Aaron Jones a lot more than apparently he's going in ESPN. Yeah. He's going as RB19. He's pick 50 in ESPN. And I, mean, I like Larry Fitzgerald. How come? Um, Just uh, how long he's been playing in the league. Um, just OG. He, yeah, he... he he makes a lot of big plays. Yeah. He did it last season. Um, and he's going to have a better quarterback. Possibly a better yeah, quarterback. That's, that's but we don't know if it's a better offensive coordinator. That's true, yeah. And last year he was, what, wide receiver 25 last year? Yeah. And so he kind of screwed even, me Even being wide too. receiver 25, like, where's that value? Is he going to be back to being a wide receiver one again? Yeah. Are there guys who I think have the potential ahead of him to, to – to be that next level and also is the new head coach going to go ahead and go know how to utilize larry fitzgerald yeah so i'm not necessarily as high on i i like him but i'm not as high on him as i was in years past and uh where's he going in i don't even know where he is on this he's going oh. in the adp I, I don't even see him on the on a list, to be honest. Oh, he's going at on us, wide receiver too. 38. He's going in ADP. I'm not going to even ESPN. try to look for him on this thing. He's going right behind Dante Pettis, going right ahead of Emmanuel Sanders. I, another guy who I, I'm probably avoiding is Emmanuel Sanders. Mm. Dante Pettis, I'm actually, I, I wouldn't mind reaching for him a bit. I know he's going 111. We talked about him in the other podcast. He's, uh, fits. I, I'm a big fan of his route running, his hands. I think he, I've compared him to Adam Thielen. Yeah. And I, I think it's a very good comp as far as being able to get open, using speed and route running to to basically break defensive backs' ankles. Uh, I think people are overplaying the, the stuff coming out of camp right now. Sometimes there's t- times where coaches are trying to get their players to, to play well and play better and get them get the best out of their players. So sometimes they start Yeah, they've been doing that a lot with the Patriots and their defense this week, so... So, and again, if you're taking, you know, right now he's going at 111. If you're taking him at pick 90, you're still not wasting really much. Yeah, nothing crazy. So, I like Dante Pettis. Uh, Allen Robinson is going at pick 85. And where do I? I have Allen Robinson at pick 53. Going into receivers. Yeah. And as far as these wide receivers go, I mean... Allen Robinson has that ability to be a number one receiver. We saw it in Jacksonville. We saw it with Blake Bortles. Now, I do not believe in Mitch Trubisky. Yeah. I do believe in Matt Nagy. I do think that Allen Robinson made Blake Bortles look good for a year. Yeah, I agree. Last year, he was coming off a torn ACL, getting chemistry, getting to know the offense, getting to know his quarterback. Hopefully, we see a step forward with Mitch Trubisky. Bortles is where right now? Backing up uh, Goff. So Yeah. Popping Bortles. The boat. Is he? He's on the Rams? He's on the Rams as the backup. Wow. Also, a guy who I really like, and I've noticed he kind of has gotten a little bit of flat. Again, another wide receiver. Maybe he's starting to get a little bit more hype now that uh, A.J. Green tor- uh, is having ankle issues. Is Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd. Just released a uh, profile about him this week on uh, the Instagram. Check it out. Yeah, dude, I think he fits Zach Robinson's offense to a T. Yeah. He kind of he can play that that uh Cooper Cup role very well. And he he's a good route runner. And he can also do the Robert Woods role in that offense as well. Yeah. Good route runner can can run out the slot. Actually, he's a decent blocking receiver as well. And he's got great hands, decent athleticism, a lot more athletic than a lot of the guys that that uh that were on the Rams. Yeah. So I like what he can do, even if he doesn't have A.J. Green. We saw him play with Jeff Driscoll last year at the end of the year. We saw him play without A.J. Green, and he played pretty decent. Now, he runs a lot out of the slot, but so does jo- Juju Smith-Schuster, and people are taking him in the top two rounds. Yeah. I'm not afraid to take Tyler Boyd at, you know, even, like, the third round, fourth round. Like, really? I 
I, listen, if I'm in the fourth round and I need a receiver, I have no problem taking Tyler Boyd because wow. I know he can be a top 24 receiver. I saw him do it last year. Uh, my biggest worry is with the offense, but even still, like, you know, I could still see them throwing to him short, trying to get some run after catch. I, what, like, I don't know. I don't get why people are so high on Juju Smith-Schuster. But then, he's going to be getting a lot of work done in. You don't think Tyler Boyd's going to get a lot of work done in? I, I think they're going to be concentrating more on Schuster. That's not on the same offense. They're on the same team. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying, like, Tyler Boyd is on the... Like, Tyler Boyd plays... Is going to be... A, they're missing A.J. Green for a couple of games, so he's going to start getting more targets from that. But even when A.J. Green's there, he played well with A.J. Green there. So... Uh, I'm Again, I'm shocked with Sony Michelle with how low he was. Oh, uh, he's going to have a good year. Yeah, he's going... Good, good year. Fifth, sixth round. Yeah. Yeah, he'll crush it. He's a safe, he's a safe bet. Um, uh, what are we doing for defenses? Are we going to be talking about those or no? No. Well, because it's not worth drafting defenses, to, to be honest. Like, I mean, it's, not, it's worth drafting them, but a lot of times you can't always figure out what the, the big defense is going to be. All right. I still I think Chicago is going to have a great fucking defense this season. Chicago sure. and Jacksonville? Chicago. Yeah. Um, all right, for tight ends, going back to that real fast. Uh, Kittle, Ertz, and Kelsey are off the board. Who are you guys going for your first tight end? And when do I get them? Uh, yeah. So, I have my big board. I have O.J. Howard, Hunter Henry, and uh, who was who's the other one that was right in that block? Because and the Evan drop, Ingram. And Ingram. Because the drop-off between number three and four, five, six is pretty drastic. It is, and and even going from four, five, six to the next level, like OJ Howard yeah. was tight end thirteen last year, and he didn't play every game. So, and that was because of an injury. Yeah, had he played, he probably would have been uh, a, a lot better of a play. He would have been a higher up in the in the ranks. Being tight end thirteen and being tight end ten in standard, tight end thirteen in PPR, so he's even better in a standard league. Yeah, that was only pay- playing 10 games when you extrapolate that you're talking about maybe tight end four or five that he would have been a lot more useful he would have been right ahead of ebron in that range yeah last like, year and nobody's taking ebron where ebron was ranked last year that's true my that- problem as a patriots fan i would always pick gronk yeah i know time. but this year i mean it's year, weird not, not having him so it's like and uh, Njoku was also, you know, another guy I would pick up. Yeah, I liked Njoku uh, too. He did, pr- he did decent on my team. Um, so who would you go after outside the top huh, three? I don't know. I know this is uncharted waters for you. Now I really got to pay attention to the tight ends. <laughs> yeah, for it real. Sucks. Well, I'm shocked. Evan Ingram, um, it, as far as ADP goes, is going ahead of OJ Howard and Hunter Henry. Really. Evan Ingram right now in ESPN he's going at pick fifty two so towards the end of the fifth round and then meanwhile OJ Howard's going at pick sixty five which actually is kind of where I kind of see OJ Howard that's like, that's yeah. a fair spot for OJ Howard. I can see Ingram going I mean Giants are so limited with weapons and he's really the only one with somewhat of a track record yeah you know? he, he's a very so. athletic tight end he's He's basically a big receiver. Yeah. And they don't have anything else, so they're going to be throwing to him. Exactly. So I can understand that. It's it's probably reminiscent of his rookie year, where he was the only thing in town, and that's what got yeah. him some real work. Yeah. So I can understand that. I can understand people going with Evan Ingram. Uh, I like O.J. Howard better, better as a player. I like Hunter Henry better as a player. And I think Hunter Henry's on a better offense. True. Now, he's coming off an ACL, but he's had a lot more time to recover from the ACL. Rehab and stuff. Yeah, That's I'm true. shocked at how high Jared Cook's going, given that he's on the Saints and that we've seen Ted Ends go to the Saints and not do anything yeah, since Jimmy Graham's I'm been there. Wary with getting Jared Cook, I, I would much feel, I feel much more comfortable going OJ Howard, uh, uh, honestly OJ Howard and uh, Evan Ingram really, Hunter Henry I'm kind of like whatever about, mm-hmm. but yeah. So it's O.J. Howard if you miss out on the top three? I would say O.J. Howard uh, and Evan Ingram are my two targeted guys after the top three. And what round would you be willing to take those guys? I'd be willing... Ah, man. I don't know. I'd say... uh, What's their ADP? Off the top of my head without even uh, basing it off of anything. I'd say... They're probably going to go like, what? Six, seven? 
All right, so that's a that's six is right where OJ Howard's going, and you basically have to take a fifth round pick to get Evan Ingram, and he's going up in other. Uh, that's in ESPN. I'm sure yeah, you have it somewhere oh on, the, on there for it. Yeah, I tried to take Ingram a little earlier. Really? Yeah. Would you? Yeah, it looks like uh, in a twelve team league, half point PPR, OJ Howard is pick nine, round five. Ingram is pick. 11, round five. Yeah, so, oh, so it's pretty much right splitting yeah, hairs. Both in round five. Yeah, I guess that's damn. a lot of the people who go, oh, I have two wide receivers, two running backs. I'm gonna yeah, go and guys. that's when the tight end run starts. Yep. Oh, I, I have out, I have those positions filled out. I'm going to go with the next spot. Yeah, I love it. Um, any guys that you that you were looking to get as far as tight ends that you're missing out on a lot? Like, that you, like if you miss out on those guys, who are, who's like your back end tight end that you're hoping back to grab? End. Um... I don't know. I mean, out of those top five guys, I've I've always had like a I've always had Ebron. Actually, I had Ebron towards the tail end of last year, and he was mm-hmm. pretty decent with Andrew Luck. Uh, Doyle, Jack Doyle, was always like a good Plus check the thing down is, between for those two Luck. guys. It, they're they're they they cannibalize each other. Yeah, Ebron really came on the scene when when Doyle got injured. Yeah, and um, the other one I don't know. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't even know who the tight end is. But for the Ravens, I'm just guessing with Lamar Jackson. Mark Andrews. Exactly. That's I was going to say that. Yeah. Uh, with Lamar Jackson he running, sounds like a writer for like some old American literature novel. Like, he does sound like an author, right? Like he just went ahead and wrote like The Great Gatsby or something. <laughs> yeah. But I think uh, he would probably be a good person to look at just because with Lamar Jackson running around so much, and if he has to do a quick check down. You know, tight ends right there. I just don't know what his athletic ability is like. You know, well, he was uh, he was touted coming out in the draft. He wasn't as highly touted as his, his teammate Maurice Hurst, which they're both on the same team. Yeah, uh, Hayden Hurst. Sorry, not Maurice Hurst. It's a different player. I forgive you. Ah, praise to the thee, Lord, <laughs> Hayden Hurst. Um, the Hayden, the Hayden, and, and it seems like once you hit that round. Uh, round five six range that's where the the tight end run ends of those guys so then people seem to kind of relax and then they take guys like vance mcdonald yeah uh delaney walker the ghost of greg olsen trey <laughs> burton guy uh, trey burton got a lot of hype last year now he's getting nothing no i love. know I feel bad for the dude any other adp surprises that you guys are wondering about they have Chicago defense going in the ninth round. So you could choose Chicago defense. You would choose them before D.D. Westbrook, Sterling Shepard, Jared Goff, Carlos Hyde, Russell Wilson, AP. I mean, I don't know. I think that's a little crazy. Because defenses, they're always – they're somewhat of a crapshoot. Like, usually you have good teams, but there's always that one team. Well, Chicago's changing D coordinators this year. Something that not, doesn't get a lot of uh, attention is yeah. that Vic Fangio's not with Chicago, and that was part of why that team played a lot better when he went there to be their D coordinator. I think defenses I get so overhyped. No, again, Chuck you could, you could stream them. You could stream yeah. them. Yeah. But I, I. And you can always pick ones that seem like they're coming up. True. And I will say, don't get me wrong, I would love to get the Chicago defense, but yeah. I think I would much rather take a flyer on DK Metcalf or let's say AP or, um, where I don't even Duke Johnson compared to defenses. Cause defenses you can stream running backs receivers. It's a little bit harder. Yeah. Once you, once you're that's, out of that top 24 range for running back, it gets pretty rough. Yeah. Yeah. What Damian, I, dude, what the heck's going on with Damian Williams? Damian, what? Uh, he's going at as running back twenty, but I hear I hear people all the time. He, he's getting he gets a lot of hype, and then one minute he's getting no hype, and it, it seems to go in and out with him. And I think it's he, you know, he's a a decent running back on Kansas City, and I I'm not super high. On, actually, I think probably the I'm about even on his stock. Reed said recently uh, he's going to be doing a committee kind of thing. But I think previous years, he's Reed has also said that before. Uh, yeah. But he's never really done a true committee. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's all talk right now. He'll probably 
take over once the season goes along. So, and Carlos Hyde is on the Chiefs, right? Yeah. Yeah. And also there's I a mean, guy called Darwin Thompson on the Chiefs. Dar so, I mean, they're deep. Darwin. So, I think it makes sense for people to dip down yeah, on them. Dude, but... nobody drafted the Wild Thornberrys characters at all in our cartoon draft. Wow, I didn't even think of that. Donnie? Wow. <laughs> so... Anyway, I, I just realized Smashing. that. <laughs> Smashing. <laughs> anyway. Can we touch on the first to worst? It was exp we, yeah, if you want, we could do... Uh, let, let me just cut this because this is coming. Okay. But... Um, so, yeah, with any other fantasy football-related stuff? No, I mean... Any other ADP questions? Have fun, dude. Is uh, this was a fun episode? Uh, it, it's nice getting to see uh, let people look at the the ranks that I'm putting out there, and can we see your rankings online? They are not up yet. I'm trying not to find yet. a yeah. way of releasing them. Um, maybe I'll do them on uh, either a website, uh, like, a, like a blog Ooh, of like some we kind. Blog. Could do a blog. Might be on the Instagram, which always follow the Instagram at draftvice underscore football. That's, As of right now, that's where everything's getting posted. Yeah, yeah, that's where everything's getting posted. Notes about the show, uh, programming info. Now I started doing on the, the Instagram. So if you want to, and, and you can also like it on Facebook. There's a Facebook. Um, Mike Williams, man, where the hell are you going? Uh oh, twenty spots later than I am on him. But anyway, uh, thanks for you guys coming on. If you want to follow Ryan Lodge, you can follow him at. L O L O D G E 2014, the year that I was born. <laughs> and if you want to follow our buddy Joe Yanucci, you can follow him at Say Mr. Beefy. Say it, say it. Mr. Beefy. Anyway, and if you want to follow the podcast, I've mentioned it before, I'll mention it again. You can follow it at DraftVice on Twitter, at DraftVice underscore football on Instagram. If you're watching on YouTube, Subscribe, like it, uh, leave a comment on the bottom. Say you love Mr. Lodge and you want to see him again. And if you uh, if you're listening to it on iTunes, uh, subscribe, rate, leave a review, preferably five stars. Uh, tell us if you like any of the guests that we've had on so far. If you want any of them to come back, if you want any of them to die, if you want any of them to resurrect. I would go draft that far ideas. with that second one. <laughs> no, that second one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Don't actually. Yeah, don't don't tell anybody that they, you want them to die. It's a little dark. Uh, I consider that constructive criticism. Yes. Oh, one last comment, dude. Cooper Cup. Yeah. Right? I released a profile on him today. Yeah. And he's currently going as wide receiver nineteen, end of the fifth round. This guy's coming off a torn ACL. That happened back in November. And people are oh, it's still too early. That's that's really early. Yeah, way too early. You're talking about change of direction issues. Yeah, like especially he's for not a guy who's a cut. slot receiver who's a route runner. Yeah, he's not going to be able to make the cuts. Eh, Ten months. He, I I I think they'll limit him. Just very limited. But considering yeah. he's going as wide receiver nineteen. Uh yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, no. And maybe though, maybe he doesn't come out out of the gate the right way. Maybe you know, like we again, we've seen players before not hit their ceiling. So. Yeah, he's got to yeah. stay healthy. Ten months is usually like average, I would say, for coming back off a uh, major ACL surgery. Well, I mean, and it also depends on the position. Like we saw Carson Wentz come back off of a ten month ACL and then broke his back. Um, true, <laughs> true. Um, but he well, also had an LCL too. Look at Edelman ACL tear. He had the whole he had his off. well he had more he yeah. also had a four game suspension he came back he was a little rusty he had a lot of rust uh, dropping a lot of passes all the way through the midseason um, and way towards the end into the postseason he really started to pick up the pace mm, true so uh, I would base it off of that um, he so maybe a guy a little too much time off though that was his problem so maybe but again Edelman had way more time to recover. Way more time to recover, yes. Um, but he also had too much time off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, too much time off could make you pretty rusty. True. I don't know. I think I might avoid. I, I don't know if I totally avoid him, but I do get a little worried with where he's going. I'll draft yeah. him later. Later. Definitely Considering later. Considering he's going ahead and of And he's Alshon. in the system, too. You know what I mean? 
He's going ahead of Alshon Jeffrey, ahead of Mike mm. Williams, AJ mm-hmm. Green. Like, and I feel like I'd rather take AJ Green, yeah. even at the risk of the ankle. You know, if you're getting a portion of AJ Green coming off the ankle versus yeah. a portion of Cooper Cup coming off an ACL. Yeah. Because also, it's the game that they play. Cooper Cup does a lot of movement, a lot of like lateral moves. He's a, a good route runner. If he's trying to make a <coughs> a hard cut on a route, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, you know, you don't want a re-injuring it, or b he's just not up to speed by doing it. Yeah, yeah. that's true. So, anyway, again, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back and have fun. Enjoy life. Peace out. Enjoy the beer. Enjoy Oktoberfest. That's how you get When I woke up this morning, I was feeling pretty dangerous. I'm about to pass. I'm about to pee for 